The most stable conformation of the cyclohexane molecule looks like this. If you look down at it from this particular angle, you can see the shape of the conformation. This conformation is called the chair structure or the chair conformation of cyclohexane because in somebody's wild imagination, it kind of re resembles a chair. And if you look in your textbook, you'll see a picture of some guy lounging on a cyclohexane ring to help you see how it looks like a chair. But you have to have quite a bit of an imagination to visualize it. It is the most stable arrangement of cyclohexane because it gives the most freedom the most amount of space between the hydrogen atoms or the substituents that are coming off of the ring. And basically what you have is one carbon atom pointing down, the other carbon atom pointing up, and then the remaining four carbon atoms all in the same plane as each other. The cyclohexane chair conformation is drawn looking at the molecule from this perspective, sort of. And I'm going to draw one. It's probably going to end up being really bad because I feel a lot of pressure to draw it nice because it's on video. It's going to, the confirmation is going to look kind of like that. That's not too bad. The molecule is like this. So these, this, these two bonds are these two bonds. Here's the point down. Here's the point up. When the cyclohexane is in this particular conformation, the chair conformation, the substituents or the hydrogen atoms that are on the ring take on this really interesting pattern. So you can look at this cyclohexane, which has got a whole bunch of stuff attached to it to help you visualize it. And here I'm holding it sideways, kind of like a chair conformation. You can see that in purple, you've got three substituents that are pointing straight up from the plane of the ring. And you have another three substituents that are pointing straight down from the plane of the ring. And then you have another six that are shown in blue that are just kind of in the plane of the ring. So you've got these three pointing straight up, these three pointing straight down, and those are called axial, the axial substituents or hydrogens. And then you've got these six that are all kind of in a ring around the cyclohexane. Those ones are called equatorial. So the cyclohexane takes on this really interesting pattern of alternating straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down as it goes around the ring. And it has angled down, angled up, angled down, angled up, angled down, angled up as it goes around the ring. And we try to represent this whenever necessary uh, on the the drawn line structure of the cyclohexane using this type of notation, alternating straight up, straight down substituents around the ring. Those are the purple axial substituents. And then alternating angled down, angled up, angled down, angled up, angled down, angled up. That's the, that's the way that we represent this particular connectivity. Now let me change some of these substituents to show you something else. On the cyclohexane, any hydrogen atom or substituent that's pointing up, whether it's straight up or angled up, axial or equatorial, those substituents are on the same side of the ring. So here I've just mixed it up where all the up substituents are now having purple atoms on them and all the ones pointing down have blue atoms on them. So you can see that whether or not the substituent is angled or going straight up, it's still above the plane of the ring. And down here, whether it's straight down or coming down at an angle, it's still below the plane of the ring. And this is how we identify the position of isomers in terms of cis and trans. If they're both up, whether they're axial or equatorial, they're cis, they're on the same plane of the ring. If you've got one up and one down, whether or not they're both uh, axial or both equatorial or one of each, they're going to be trans to each other. So if we look at in your textbook, chapter three, problem 33 in the old book, the new book, sorry, and you can look at some of these chair structures that are drawn here with the substituents on them, you can see that here we have two methyl substituents. One is axial down, one is equatorial down, but they're both down. So this is the cis isomer. 
Here we have two substituents, again, both pointing down, that's another cis isomer. Here we have two substituents, one up, one down, that's a trans isomer. And here we have one substituent down, one substituent up, that's the trans isomer as well.